this uh, webinar how to start an institutional incubation center will be you know going through three different parts where we are going to understand everything about incubation center and then why we need to you know excel uh, activate incubation centers or active uh, accelerate incubation center so that we can have a larger pool of this number of startups and uh, certainly we can uh, build a strong startup ecosystem at institutional campuses as well and then will be you know coming with the actual content uh, that is how to start an institutional startup center so we you have already you know uh, gone through nisp policies uh, you have you know guidelines of national innovation and startup policy so as a part of this each and every institutions right now they are into you know how they can activate the startup cell how they can activate iics how they can activate uh, the incubation centers maybe in uh, technology business incubators you have maybe you have a livelihood business incubator so whatever incubation centers we do have at institutional campuses be it at university level or be it at institutional level we need to see how we can uh, eventually activate them so there are three to four different pain points which right now the institutions they are you know focused or they uh, wish to address number one the students the culture where we see at institute level right now majority of the students maybe 80 to 90% even more than the students they are even in a in a role of you know they are in a role of job seekers so even they are looking after the employment or they are you know uh, running behind the placements and everything so that is not you know where we see a culture of startup so each and everything we need to keep in place so that we can uh, imbibe this culture of startup ecosystem at campuses and that is why number one pain point is the students where we need to first orient students about the opportunities in startups about the opportunities in entrepreneurship that is number one number two the immediate pain point which all the institutions have that is raising funds for institutions raising funds for incubation centers that is number two and number three even if we have established iic centers or ed centers or startup centers or incubation centers now the problem is how to run or how to activate the incubation center so that we can have an outcome oriented uh, activities for startup centers now just a moment few more members are waiting in a room yes so as a part of this i am now uh, going to share you a presentation powerpoint presentation and through this particular presentation i am going to take you through what why and how about incubation center so in this next 50 minutes i am going to share you all these things which are related with incubation centers and before that uh, i see almost 50% of the students uh, we as a opex we as a civic we have introduced or we know each other but uh, there are remaining 50% who are not aware about uh, what we do how we do even about me so i'll be quickly sharing you my linkedin profile as well so that you can understand what we do how we do and why we do so just a moment i'll be sharing you a powerpoint presentation yes so i guess you are able to see the screen now is it is it visible you can use chat box now you can see a uh, linkedin profile of mine so here like as a part of this all these activities right now uh, number one because many of the participants you have engineering base so number one thing to clear i am not an engineer i am basically a healthcare professional and right from last 5 to 6 year i am into startup space so we have this accelerator as well as incubation center we do have our own startups which which are into education which are into healthcare which are into food okay so right now uh, i am basically leading three humanity plus companies i am into startups i am into entrepreneurship uh, even here we see uh, there are multiple things which even we need to bridge a gap between industries and academics as you do for your placement activities similarly we need to bridge this gap between industries and academia so that we can have maximum industry oriented projects or maximum partnership from the 
industries even many of the participants they have a question like how we can raise the funds from industries how we can utilize their csr funds so that we can activate the startup ecosystem so this is about uh, my introduction right now i'm uh, leading opic startup accelerator as a co-founder and ceo uh, also siri edutech which is one of our startup uh, i'm working there as a co-founder -co and ceo i'm also a director uh, training and operations for civic business incubator i'm also a franchisee partner for satvik and many of the institutions or incubation centers whatever we have uh, i'm working there as a, a member or as an advisory member as well now i'll be sharing you a powerpoint presentation and through which we are going ahead with what why and how about the incubation center so let's quickly first understand what is incubation center okay so incubation center here i want to give you a simple example of the incubators which which we see at hospital level so at hospital level what we have is basically when we have say for example a premature baby when a newborn newborn baby is there which is premature or uh, at that particular point of time what we do is we keep that baby in incubator why we keep that baby in incubator because whatever environment is there which has to be there in order to you know uh, that baby needs to be get matured and that is why whenever a baby is not mature enough we keep that baby in incubator so the external environment should not affect baby whatever nutrition or whatever support system is required for the growth of baby it has to be there and this is what the role of incubator is similarly or same kind of principle you can apply for institutional incubation centers or business incubation centers in this scenario whatever startup ideas we have maybe from faculty maybe from students uh, i guess my ppt is visible to all okay not clear just a moment just a moment Yes, I guess PPT is clearly visible now. Just a moment. Is it visible now? Okay, just a moment. yes okay so yeah so we we are into the concept of incubator so like how we have incubators at hospital similarly we have business incubation centers it may be technology business incubator it may be livelihood business incubator it may be institutional incubation center it may be private incubation centers so be it all kind of incubation center their primary role is to incubate newborn ideas right so newborn ideas newborn startup ideas are just like newborn babies who are not matured enough to address the environment or to address the market and that is why these newborn ideas has to be taken care by incubator so that they can be matured enough to address to the audience to address to the market to address to the entire environment and that is the primary objective behind setting up incubation centers right so as we even go go back the primary objective behind why government of india or why it it all things comes under niti ayog why niti ayog is you know facilitating all these institutions or making it mandatory for all the institutions to set up their incubation centers is the primary objective is to create a job right because even today we see there is again a big dearth where we can see a big gap between job creators and job seekers and that is why unless and until we create jobs job seekers are not going to be survived in this fast changing market which is even uh, because of the pandemic today our unemployment rate has been already crossed 20% so we need to see how we can create jobs and incubation centers are the you know the the best solutions 
where we can see more number of incubation centers will generate more number of startups more number of startups will generate more number of jobs and that is where we can accomplish our projected outcome right so that is basically where we have a need of these incubation centers right now moving ahead what exactly these services are even when you even uh, most of the participants probably are from bangalore or probably from karnataka so what we know is bangalore is silicon valley for india where we see maximum number of co working spaces maximum number of business incubators so what exactly these incubation center provide all kind of services okay number one co working spaces so because as a startup founder i could not even today afford the rent for my space for my office and that is why i need to take a support of incubation center so being an institutional incubation center you already have a space you already have an infrastructure i can utilize this space as a co working space so that i can work there my entire team can work over there just a moment i have to keep on checking this chat box yes okay so i need to uh, so co working spaces that is number one facilitation center which incubation centers they have number two and essential part that is fundraising assistance most of the startups today even uh, if you just google it maximum indian startups more than 75% of the indian startups they are bootstrapped and that is why the amount which i have or the amount which my co founder have we utilize this entire amount in bootstrapping my startup at a certain level but what next we cannot scale up our startup based on whatever funds we have available with us and that is why we are always looking for funds right being a startup even we cannot get immediate funds from banks or there are some of the schemes or nodal agencies even we you know have this limitation where we could not get these funds and that is why if i as a startup founder could approach incubation centers incubation centers they already have some funds what we call as funds of funds so what we know is central government in 2016 they have capitalized or they have you know uh, classified 3000 crore rupees of funds especially for the startups now how central government is going to distribute this amount of funds for startups yes obviously through state governments through different nodal agencies like what we know is msme or sidb or different kind of nodal agency from different sectors like uh, manufacturing associations or agriculture or food likewise they are distributing these funds to central government and nodal agencies and then these incub these state governments or these nodal agencies they are distributing these funds to incubation center let me tell you a simple example like for example now central government have distributed some of the funds to states like for example at maharashtra we have maharashtra state innovation society what we call them as msins so maharashtra state innovation society they have received funds from central government and these funds then will be distributed to some of the potential incubation startups uh, incubation centers so maharashtra state innovation society they have identified 16 incubation centers from maharashtra state and they have distributed 5 crore rupees of funds to each and every incubation center based on their potential based on their activities and based on the outcome which they have presented in 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 a time so far so this is how incubation center first they receive funds from government and then it is the duty it is the responsibility and it is the authority of incubation center to manage these funds so when i as a startup founder approach incubation center they will first screen my idea and based on that they will you know decide whether to uh, allot me funds or not so this is basically the the pain point which startup founders have which can be solved immediately and easily by incubation centers next and important is mentoring assistance what we know is startups cannot be always a one man army and that is why startups they need mentors they need experts they need consultants be it for ipr be it for product development be it for sales and marketing be it for which company i have to you know establish whether private limited llp section 8 likewise at each and every stage as a startup founder i need to see whether i can be connected with maximum mentors so that they can guide me at a right time and 
because incubation center is basically a facilitation center they already have a board of all these mentors and advisors who will be in a role to guide each and every startup founders and their team next is resources like for example be it machines or equipments or instruments whatever resources i require during my product development as a startup i i can utilize these resources from incubation center then legal and regulatory compliances support as i said whatever legal and uh, other regulatory compliances are there i need to see some of the outsourcing agency where i can outsource all these tasks see i am basically an innovator i don't have time to manage my legal and all other compliances right because it is again it become headache for me to manage these tasks and that is why i'll check whether i can out, uh, outsource or appoint these tasks to my uh, ca or cs or legal entities and incubation center as we have seen they already have access to all these people next is marketing assistance you pick any business it can be you know kfc it can be nestle or it can be startups like paytm or ola or uber marketing sales and marketing they are you know completely independent things to think on right and that is why all things are you know at one side and sales and marketing as is at one side so this is what i have understood in the last 5 to 6 uh, years managing all the startups whatever we have so marketing needs to be a special attention and that is why when incubation centers are there as we have seen they already have the network by using this network i can market my product to all the networks which are connected with incubation centers right that is why first 100 customers are important for any of the startup and out of this 100 customers incubation centers can give you maximum networks to to bring such kind of customers then business training programs now there is one more fact and figure about indian startups is uh, today approximately 80% of the indian startups they are failing in the first 3 years now what is the reason because these startups or these startup founders whatever products they are bringing in or whatever ideas they are bringing in even they even not caring about ip protection so at again at each and every stage you should be a learned startup founder you cannot even you know go on all the things with with trial and error approach no so if you get a kind of training assistance a kind of mentoring assistance be it for design thinking be it for ipr be it for mvp be it for uh, raising the funds at each and every stage we need to get this training as a startup founder networking assistance we have already discussed early stage customer acquisition high speed internet access and accounting and uh, financial management access so these are all the blend of services which incubation centers can give so why incubation centers so number one yes as we have seen to create jobs wealth and business aligning with national priorities number two to promote new technology or knowledge or innovation based startups to provide a platform for speedy commercialization of technologies developed by the host institution or by academic technical and r and d institution now one more thing which we have you know seen here uh as a as a startup or as an industry is whatever institutions we have they are coming with great research component from faculty members because uh, almost most of the faculty members they are phd they have excellent research component but here we need to see how we can commercialize these research projects how we can commercialize their prototypes into a marketable product because you see unless and until you bring your research you bring your innovation to the market it is of no use so we are not making research or we are not spending our time our efforts in a lab just to you know publish some papers or publish some in some of the conferences or to get the degree no here we need to see how we can commercialize these research projects how we can have a technology transfer aspects of whatever prototypes we have how we can transfer our prototypes to the industry so all these approaches should be there and incubation centers will be in a role of facilitator where the existing research projects by the faculty can be bring to the next level be it at startup level be at at industry level through technology transfer number 4 to build a vibrant startup ecosystem by establishing a network between academia financial institution industries and 
other institutions you see when we when we use a term startup ecosystem startup ecosystem is huge so it is connected with we have startup founders co-founders some legal entities government of india is there uh, some of the other consultants are there mentors are there investors are there incubation centers are there uh, accelerators are there so similarly these all are the different elements of startup ecosystem now when we see how we can grow then here we need to see that if at all we are collaborating all these elements of ecosystem together then and then only we can see this win-win situation for everyone be it for investor be it for startup founder be it for incubation center be it for any legal entity here we need to grow together so that we can optimize and we can achieve our final outcome of creating jobs and last to provide cost effective and value added services to the startups like mentoring legal technical assistance uh, intellectual property related services okay now what's there for students now why should student should take interest in incubation center or why should student uh, or when when uh, many of the students they ask why i should you know uh, take a step for entrepreneurship or what is there in incubation center for me so these are some of the services which the students can get from incubation centers now even whenever i have these kind of webinars or live interaction especially for the students even today at four o'clock uh, we have a separate webinar for the students mainly for uh, healthcare. and what we have observed is students they have excellent ideas and one thing which students have which probably we at this point of time or at this age we do not have and that that is technology transition students or these millennials they immediately accept the technology and if they have a brilliant idea and if they can club this with the technology then we can see their ideas can disrupt this market and that is why we need to see how if a student have some of the ideas how we can take ahead these ideas to a prototype how we can take ahead from prototype to product and that is why we need to see how we as an incubation center can support or can be a mentor to these kind of ideas or to these kind of student startups right one more thing or one more fact to be shared here is today in india from the last four years there is 30 percent year on year growth in student startup say for example if i have an incubation center and today we have 10 student startups next year i may have 13 and that is why even the institutional incubation centers right now they are getting good number and good quality of student startups i can give you some of the examples like practo practo is a student startup practo was you know started in in year 2008 by two engineering students and that time their age was 19 so imagine two engineering students from nit bangalore with an idea they could start a potential startup practo which is a world's leading healthcare startup today we have multiple examples like practo we have multiple examples like student startups here we have some exceptional incubation centers in india even in maharashtra we have riddle we have uh, sptbi we have deshpande foundation so these are some of the renowned incubation centers which have seen the traction of student startups as well as professional startups right so what is there for students uh, through incubation center is number one different types of awareness and orientation programs and that is the one which we need to you know inculcate more or focus more on because unless and until you orient unless and until you aware students about startup about this ecosystem about this entire journey of startup students will not take interest in startups they will not take interest for entrepreneurship next we can have certain workshops like ideation workshops we can have idea thons we can have hackathons boot camp certainly uh, to all those who have a great potential in their ideas we can have some pre incubation program before they can be a part of incubation program you can have some pre incubation program you can have or you can guide them for prototype commercialization uh, say for example there are certain students who have excellent ideas which is based on mobile application so if someone is you know 
demonstrating your mobile app, how it functions through their prototypes, then you have to think how you can commercialize these prototypes into an actually commercially viable product. Then incubation support, fundraising through seed fund, whatever seed funds incubation centers have, you can raise the funds to these student startups based on their requirement. If suppose you have five teams, each one is, you know, requirement of some 25,000 rupees or 50,000 rupees, at least you can contribute these seed funds so that they can manage their prototype. So whatever funds you are, you know, supporting them, these students start up a small amount of funds, they can utilize these funds for their prototypes because unless and until they fix their prototype, you cannot go ahead in the journey of startup. Next investor pitch deck. As an incubation center, we already have a connections of different investors, be it VCs, be it angel investors. And here again, in a role of facilitator here, you need to connect student startups in front of investors, because if investors, they like this idea, they can invest like anything because this is the idea which they, you know, think most of the time. And yes, of course, business model as well, team building, at initial level students they you know some students they work in a team some students they work independently but for those who are working independently incubation support incubation center can support them to build a team and then internship opportunity similar question is for faculty what's there for me as an academic faculty or as a researcher what is there for me so incubation center for faculty members or faculty researchers can be like IPR support, whatever innovation component you have, you can have IPR support, end to end IPR support through incubation center, research commercialization, which we have already discussed, technology transfer. Here, uh, we have one university, Krishna deemed university, which is which is into medical university, and they have some excellent products into some uh, dental caries or even into orthopedics even whatever doctors they have the faculty doctors they are coming with some great innovation as far as products are concerned but ideally they do not have time to commercialize these projects or to commercialize these ideas now at this point of time because we are partnered with each other what they do is they sign a technology transfer agreement with us so that we can have their products in line and we can we as an incubation center can connect with whatever industry connect we have so that their innovation can be commercialized through these industry networks and this is how the researcher this is how the innovator will start getting the royalty out of it so this is how a technology transfer works and here we need to understand yes we have an element known as technology transfer and how we can utilize this technology transfer so that faculties, faculty researchers or innovators, they can commercialize their own research in a market. Similarly, funding schemes. Yes, you are already aware about DST or DBT kind of funds or uh, other than this as well. But apart from this, there are n number of numerous funding schemes which are already available by central and state government, right? But incubation centers are there which can guide these faculty members which can guide these academic researchers so that they can be aware of these funding schemes and they can apply for the fundraising next is prototype commercialization and yes networking support how we have seen for student startups now coming to the main element of this webinar that is how to set up an incubation center now i'm going to take you through nine steps which will guide you or through which you can understand how step by step you can go ahead so that you can set up your incubation center. So that is when we call incubation center, there are some of the uh, primary requirements or prerequisites that you need to have a co-working space. So that uh, we have, we are covering in number one stage number one, then product development lab or product development center. So in case if you, your incubation center have some inquiries for product development because you see startups they operate in either product or in service so in case if you have some inquiries or startup ideas which are related with product you should have a product development lab which you which you as an institution can easily utilize all your existing machine and equipments and instruments right 
Number three is business model lab. See, it is incubation centers. They are not only for product development. Product development is one stage and business development is one stage. There are certain incubation centers who have expertise in both. They are great in product development. They are great in business development. Similarly, as we have seen some of the uh, student startups or even faculty researchers, they are extremely great in product development. So they are great from idea to prototype stage. That is what we know is product development. But when it comes to business development, see, if, if I'm a startup founder, I'm a healthcare professional. I know how to ideate, how to innovate, how to solve the problem of the customer that I know. You tell me or you, you, you know, uh, tell me your problem. I can design a kind of solution or I can design a kind of machine. I can design a product. That is my expertise. Don't tell me to market this product and to sell this product in the market. I'm not good in that. That is why along with product development lab, you need to have a business model lab as well, where different experts, different mentors from different organizations, they will come together and they will brainstorm to commercialize your prototype. And that is why business model lab is essential and it is going to be a decision making factor in bringing your product from prototype to a product. And last, that is IPR center. Even today, uh, even most of the institutions, they are now starting these IPR centers so that they can have end-to-end uh, -end solutions at uh, institute level only, whatever is dealing with IPR. Okay. So before we go ahead to the nine steps of the startup, let us first understand the process of student startups or the process of faculty startups or the process of institutional incubation center. So this is how a typical journey of a startup is in an incubation center, right? So now we have some two types of, let's consider there are two types of startups. Number one is startups who are incubating under incubation centers and number two who are bootstrapped and they are, you know, not required any kind of support from incubation centers. They are starting in their own. So let's consider how a journey of startup at institute level or how at institutional incubation center is. So this is where you see a journey of ideas into a prototype and through prototype to market through a incubation center, right? So that is the initial journey of idea to market or what we know uh, call them as concept to company, right? So at initial level, we have ideas. So these ideas are, you know, absolutely raw ideas. We do not have any kind of prototypes or nothing. These ideas can be from faculty members, can be from students. It can be from even uh, any of the stakeholder of the startup ecosystem. It can be from anyone. So here we need to see these ideas, like what we have, you know, uh, already discussed is basically a baby at baby stage or at a seed stage, these ideas are. Now here you need to see how we can formulate a POC for these ideas. POC is proof of concept. Unless and until you validate your ideas, we cannot assure that yes, we can go ahead now or no, we have to stop here, right? So this is basically a POC which helps us to validate your idea. So number one stage is pre-incubation where First of all, we validate your idea. Most of the times what happens is if at all you are not validating your idea correctly, then yes, go, moving ahead, you need to change something in your product or something in your business model. So apart from reworking in your own startup, let's then utilize maximum time in validating your idea. So that's the most essential stage which we need to understand that is idea validation. Now, once you have a prototype, then you can create a pro sorry, once you have a POC, then you can create a prototype. So prototype is any working model can be a machine. It can be in any kind of equipment, even it can be any kind of sketch on your paper or something like that. It can be a process flow as well. So that is nothing but prototype, right? So once you have identified this prototype, then you have to go ahead and that is nothing but you have to approach some teaching customers. Say for example, now suppose I'm building an application, mobile application 
So number one stage at POC level, what I'll do is I'll sketch the entire process flow. Let's say I'm uh, creating a recruitment platform. So now on a paper, on a piece of paper, I'll draw the entire process flow. If HR is, you know, entered in my application and HR is, you know, logging in, in my product, how his journey will be and how I'm solving his product. Right. So apart from all other add on features and everything, whatever raw stage idea is, I'll draw this on paper and then certainly I'll create some prototype by using some of the application. Now I'll show this application to my incubation center. Incubation center will validate my idea and then we all see to it that yes, now I have to validate this idea from my end user. Now, who is my end user HR? So whatever prototype I have, I'll bring this prototype or I'll carry this prototype to HR, say certainly 10 or 20 HR. I'll show this prototype how it exactly works, right? Based on my prototype, he will suggest me something for improvements or he may suggest that no, I'm not looking for this kind of solution. I'm looking for X, Y, Z. So rather than creating ABC, let's create X, Y, Z because that's the actual need of the customer. So before you go ahead for developing or polishing your product, now it, this is where you have understood that yes, now we can start with X, Y, Z rather than ABC, right? And that is nothing but your MVP, minimum viable product without any features and everything, right? So that is teaching customer where you have approached a teaching customer so that you can improvise your product. Now, once your teaching customer approves your product, yes, you are going in a, in a good way. And this is what we are in a requirement of then incubation center, then approves this idea and your incubation period will start. Right. And that is up till you reach to the market. So during this incubation period, maybe this is for one year, maybe this is for 18 months, maybe this is maximum for two years. So during this incubation period, here we need to see whatever ideas you have transformed into prototype, how to commercialize or how to transform this prototype into a product. And this is where we come into different stages of the startups. So talking about startup stages, there are 16 different stages of the startup and incubation center will, you know, facilitate these different stages. It can be product development. It can be adding some features. It can be development support. It can be feedback mechanism, feed forward, feed forward mechanism. It can be analytics part. It can be team building. It can be uh, sales. It can be marketing, social media, everything, almost everything. So during this incubation period, startups or these ideas will get 16 stages of a 16 stage facilitation from incubation center. So, I'll use a co-working space at incubation center and I'll proceed ahead unless and until I'm able now to launch my product in the market. And that is why incubation center will give me a launch pad. And by using this launch pad, then I'm matured enough to enter in the market. And this is what we were talking about when I was giving you an example of a premature baby. So now your ideas is matured enough. Now your product is matured enough so that you can then reach to the market and you can access to the entire market, right? Now, once you enter in the market, next support is by accelerators, right? So accelerators, what they do is at certain level, for example, whatever app I have built, say this is uh, initially my market is only Goa state, right? Now I have to, you know, I want to expand this in Maharashtra state as well as Karnataka state. So what I'll do is I'll, you know, see to it how I can raise the funds because for market expansion or five business expansion, I again needs fund. So this is where accelerators, they have different cohort programs. They have different acceleration programs by using this. I learn how to scale up my startup and I'll attract some of the investors, maybe private equity, maybe VC funding, maybe angel investors, and then I'll raise the funds so that I can have scaling up. So when we operate, as an incubation center, what we have is a blend of incubation center and accelerator working closely with each other. I'll tell you there are very few areas or there are very few organizations who have a blend of incubation centers and accelerators. 
you have seen this entire process right from idea to prototype prototype to market and then market to scale up so whatever stages are involved we as an accelerator as well as incubator whatever stages are there we are facilitating all these stages now at this point of time where we do not have incubation centers at institute level or at university level what we can immediately do is number one here we need to establish an incubation center now there are multiple questions which even the uh, different faculty members or even the directors they ask is whether at initial level do we need to have section 8 company so at initial level no the answer is no even through your institutional center you can start with incubation center incubation center will be a section 8 company completely different entity when you are approaching for funds so whenever a central government is there who have already approved your incubation center and they wish to pass on the funds they cannot pass on these funds to you as an institution they can pass on these funds to you as a section 8 company so at that point of time you can have a separate section 8 company so as a part of establishment you need to manage some of your infrastructure so as a infrastructure part what is the primary requirement is minimum 2000 to 5000 square feet area you can devote this for startup workspace where you can have some five to six different cubicles where the teams of startups it can be a faculty team it can be a student startup team you are you know devoting this entire team for the startups only okay so here uh, whatever resources are there maybe computer terminals or printers or the basic infrastructure requirement which is required for startups you can give them access to all these things right number two thing is you need a spoc that is single point of contact right so here uh, any faculty member who is right now handling iic or who is right now handling edc he can initially uh handle this incubation center but my opinion would be because i am not you know coming from any of the academic institution but i have seen the kind of pain points which right now maximum iic coordinators are facing is incubation center needs to be an individual or independent leader because what we see today is as a faculty faculty members they have their academic workload as well as few of the committees like training and placement like iic startups or incubation centers won't work like this incubation centers they need independent leadership who can work hard 24 by 7 on these incubation centers and that is why here we need to have spoc so spocs are basically those who have iics who have edcs or who have already handled or such kind of experience he is handling with so here we need to see how one can be a part of this who can handle or who can lead this entire incubation center stage number two once you have established once you have allotted an infrastructure for incubation center you need to create some of the documentation now as a part of documentation even what we have observed is even most of the institutions they are you know uh, taking more efforts on creating documentation because it is a part of mandate because it is a part of nisp people are spending more time in documentation rather than the actual activation so here what we propose to all the institutions is rather than you know focusing more in documentation part let's focus more on activation so at initial level you can have all your initial basic documentation that is affiliation documentation or you can create a mentor board you can create advisory board certainly before you start this you can visit your nearest government of india approved incubation center who have already received some funds through different programs it can be tbi it can be lbi it can be anything but let's have a visit to the nearest incubation center so that you can you know understand their systems their processes everything so you need to you can even affiliate to these incubation center now because everything is now coming virtually you can have this affiliation to any of the incubation center or accelerators right now why we require this kind of affiliations now because see uh, as an institution you have already affiliated with state university or aict similarly your incubation center it has to be affiliated with 
other incubation centers or other accelerators so that they can support you in whatever requirement you have similarly you can create a mentor board say for example if if right now you have decided that you will work only on two verticals for example food technology and uh, healthcare technology right now your area of interest or area of focus is only food and healthcare sector right so whatever mentors are there who basically are into food and healthcare sector you can approach them and you can call them to be a mentor for your incubation center so this is where what we can create this mentor board and advisory board then is number 3 once you have created this infrastructure once you have you know basic documentation ready for affiliation for mentor board then you can have this orientation workshops and events so as we have discussed unless and until you orient students orient faculty about the importance about the journey of startups they are not going to be turning on for this startup and incubation related activities right so here important thing is at initial level say for example let's consider like let's consider i'm 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 you know playing some uh, video game and i have level 1 2 3 4 in my game unless and until i cross level 1 i cannot reach to level 2 or level 3 or so on so at level 1 you need to address maximum students say for example if your if your institution is engineering institution so so far approximately you have some 2 to 3000 students so approach to maximum students so that you can have this funneling so you will address 2000 students for the next program only 500 will come only then 100 will come and only 50 will come and these 50 will be your target audience or target startup teams who can be a part of your incubation center so through such kind of orientation workshops or events you can address the uh, all kind of students next is once you did your orientation program where you have you know uh, stated or explain all the students about the journey of startup and how to start a startup then students will start ideating okay many of the students they have their own ideas with them so here you can organize some idea thons or hackathons at your institute level where these students will participate once they participate your jury team your mentor board can even uh, screen them say for example during idea thon you have a participation from 20 teams or 20 ideas are there out of 20 screen only five potential ideas process only five potential ideas right so through these kind of events you can then activate or you can screen such kind of ideas right now let's consider out of 20 you have screened or you have shortlisted five ideas only five ideas now for these five ideas arrange a pre incubation program it can be a three months pre incubation programs it can be a one month pre incubation program and in this pre incubation program they will understand now they have idea how to create prototype so in pre incubation program again your mentors will be involved your advisors will be involved and they will teach them they will address them that yes your idea has a potential now what next so the solution of what next they will get through this pre incubation program where students will you know utilize design thinking approach utilize prototyping approach so that they can learn how to create a prototype so at the end they will create this prototype once these five teams they have a prototype now again ask them to present in front of investors in front of mentors that is what we have this boot camp so during this boot camp again we all are going to screen these five prototypes now earlier at ideathon level at hackathon level they were at idea stage but now they are not in idea stage they are now in boot camp they are now in prototype stage so now we are evaluating these five teams these five prototypes and then we are shortlisting say two or three suppose your incubation center has the the facility for two startups or two cubicles then you can finalize only two right so out of five now you will be finalizing two prototypes okay and now these two prototypes will be a part of your incubation program so your incubation program can be 12 months long it can be 18 months long this is based on in which sector you are what kind of expertise you have what kind of funds you have similarly generate or create this one year incubation support 
the kind of academics or the kind of academic content which you all have similarly create a content for incubation program for the next one year in this one year now your task is to convert these prototypes into a product so earlier pre incubation program what we did is we transformed ideas into prototype and now through this incubation through incubation program now we are transforming these prototypes into a product so this this may take one year because again there are multiple factors as we have already seen there are 16 stages that startup founder needs to understand these stages he has to execute each and every stage so that he may have mvp first mvp second mvp number 10 mvp number 15 it can be anything it can be anything unless and until you all get a surety or assurance from your target user from your target customer you cannot launch that right so for this one year he will have this incubation support so this is simply an r model for institutional campus where we are running this institutional incubation centers where uh, we as an a civic or we as an opex we are basically operating partners for these institutions right and this is where we establish their incubation centers and we activate this incubation center through our support for one year so eventually we have orientation programs events then we have training programs then idea thons boot camps sorry pre incubation programs then boot camp and then final incubation support right one more thing faculty projects here now we were talking about say for example in ideathon during ideathon we had 20 ideas right out of which now we have shortlisted only five what about faculty projects even faculty projects can be a part of this even you can run a separate ideathon for faculty members because you see there have you know seen that they have some credible ideas potential ideas so you can even have separate ideathons for faculty projects right so that is where even faculty projects or faculty researchers can be a part of this incubation programs but here we need to decide as for faculty there are two options number one ask them whether you as a faculty whether you as an innovator wish to start your own startup yes or no if it is yes then he can be a part of incubation program entire one year incubation program if he as a faculty don't want to start a startup but yes he is ready to commercialize his project then option 2 is there that is technology transfer where again incubation center will be there but some independent help will be there for these faculties where these ideas will be translated to the industries and then we can have a mutual communication so that we can have this technology transfer documents ready for signing in right so for prototype validation prototype testing business modeling commercialization and technology transfer we have all these aspects and services for faculty projects as well and then last we have a launch pad a completely you know supportive launch pad from the incubation center where these startups will be you know ready to launch their startup in a in a market so kind of marketing kind of branding support which all they are required incubation centers will you know give them all because the credibility of startup is important because if i am alone starting something of my own i may have some limited network if i am even launching i can use press media and something like that but if i am launching my startup through an incubation center because incubation center has larger reach this credibility or the accountability of the startup will definitely is going to enhance and that is why completely supportive launchpad will be there for these startup teams and last that is fundraising so now how the question is through this stage number 1 or step number 1 to 9 how we as a institution could survive through our own funds because for all these activities we cannot you know dump all our funds accepted but at initial level at least for a year whatever activities are there it has to be self supportive it has to be self funded right because unless and until you have some proven track records at your institutional incubation center these funds will not be percolated or approved by central and state government so at least for one year you can you know utilize self funds to activate all these kind of startups or activities now once say for example now 
next year once you have some two to three startups which are graduated from your university from your campus then you can approach with a fundraising proposal to whatever schemes we have maybe atal innovation mission maybe msme maybe tbi maybe lbi whatever schemes we have whatever fundraising proposals government invites you can submit your proposal with your proven track records that in previous year we have this 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 activities this is the analytics this is the outcome this is the result whatever mentors you are connected with whatever activities and everything is there you can you know blend this together in a proposal so that your proposal will be sanctioned and then you can get the funds from central and state government okay so now we have uh, one more webinar on this approach how to raise the funds for institutional incubation centers how to raise the funds for your research projects where your when when you want to commercialize your research project into a commercial product you will require funds and that is why for all our partnered institutions we have one more webinar on 26 so i'll be sharing all those details later in the session so here the pain point of the institution is to raise the funds and then once you have this initial traction you can submit your proposal and you can raise the funds so that your incubation center should have sustainable business model so like startups how they have their business model what is your business model because incubation centers no doubt they are section eight companies but still it is not like you have to you know put all your funds for incubation center no even today whatever incubation centers we have those who have not approved by government or those who have not received any funds from government they have their own business model so what is your business model how my incubation center is going to you know bring revenue for my incubation center because unless and until i have a revenue i cannot activate all the activities that is why here you should have your revenue model as an incubation center right so that is num number one where you need to create a business model for your incubation center as well and number two is here you need to keep on approaching to all these uh, government nodal agencies so that you can write a research proposal or funding proposal and you can attract some kinds of uh, proposals right 